You didn't think I'd forgotten about Croft Manor, did you? <laughs> Welcome back to Tomb Raider Anniversary. We are not quite done yet, so let's go ahead and enter Croft Manor. Miss Croft, pardon the mess in the foyer, but a rather large shipment of antiquities arrived while you were out. I would have had the crates placed in the gallery, but the security alarm has somehow been activated, locking the room from the inside. If this was not concerning enough, the renovators have shut off the water supply to the entire manor in order to continue construction of the pool house. On the bright side, I've located your missing journal and returned it to its appointed hiding place in your room. Faithfully in your service, Winston. Lara looked really angry there. So there is quite a conundrum to solve here. Our main goal is to unlock the music room. And we don't have much on us. We only have... Remember the menu? Okay, so we only have a med pack. Well, two med packs, one large, one small. And our trusty flashlight that we have on Nintendo Wii. So that's it. So we have books to read as well. These are optional, but they're a nice little acknowledgement to previous games. Uh, some of them are loosely based on what we're doing here in Croft Manor. So here is our first one. And even as their hooves shook the earth beneath him, Gilead gathered his remaining strength and drew back his bow. The Trials of Gilead, Volume 1. So any talk of Gilead like this is a bit of a hint to, well, not a hint as such, but an acknowledgement, I suppose, is the best word to use for Croft Manor. So this is our adventure, in a way. Another one here. It's sometimes tricky to get your uh, prompts. And there he stood, assuring all within earshot of his coming victory until it was time to return to his ships, leaving Athens to undertake his mighty task. Okay, another one. Do you see it? This book's not very interesting. I'd love to know what this book is to be so boring. <laughs> okay, so getting on with our initial adventure. So there is an item we can collect, so we'll have to just climb on top of all the boxes to get to that. So we'll not need to use this item straight away, but it's right here. We may as well pick it up. So just leap across this, uh, this painting. And here it is. You found the sculpture gear. I wonder where this goes. Okay, so drop on down and let's move on. So first thing we'll have to do, we can only be heading upstairs for now, so we need to sort of collect an item such as the grapple to then be able to do something else in the manor. So it's not particularly linear, you have to do it in order. So we can't go to the right yet, so when we, when Lara was reading the note, it talked about the, the gallery, which is locked, so the gallery is over there. And the further door is actually the music room. So we can't do anything on the right hand side, so just come to the left. Now just skip in this door for now, I'm going to go to Lara's bedroom, which is this way. Completely optional, by the way, we do not have to ever enter Lara's bedroom. And in each little uh, corridor section, there's always two books. Better still, the new 50 caliber round comes with a full metal jacket designed to maximize muzzle velocity and power to the pit. Come on. There we go. While other traps have a similar closing mechanism, it was the Egyptians who perfected the savage effectiveness of the holding barbs. Okay, and then into Alara's bedroom. So, not much to do in here. So, one thing we can do is we can change our outfit. So, it's the relics that unlock the outfits here, as I've mentioned throughout the main game. I think I'll slip into something else. So we have Anniversary, Legend, Doppelganger, 
Camouflage, Golden, Craft Manor Sport, Classic, Wetsuit, Catsuit, Scorch Natler. So which one is your favourite out of these? I actually have two favourites, the Catsuit and the Camouflage. But I'm going to go with Classic while we're roaming the manor, because why not? Okay. Looking stylish. And it did mention Alara's journal, so to get that, just pull down these two dagger-like levers. So she about pulls them out the wall, really. Look how ferocious she is. Okay, and here is the journal. So hands up, how many of you actually look at the journal, excluding the one time you are told you have a journal that you can look at? Because personally, I've never ever used the journal. I wonder if Winston read any of it. And Gilead knew the gears of his heart would never turn again as he sacrificed his one true love to save the kingdom he had fought for so long to protect. The Trials of Gilead, Volume 3. Another one here. This one's pretty intriguing. Pink is the new black. Oh boy. <laughs> It is only through knowing our history that we can learn from the past. Okay, and that's all there really is to do in Lara's bedroom. So now I'm going to leave and carry on with our adventure. Whoop. These passages always confuse me with the camera being in front of Lara. <laughs> Okay, so now the first place you can officially head to is this way. But the new pharaoh was not content with all that was now his. No, Ramses II wanted even more. He had visions of an empire so spectacular, all mankind would come to marvel at its glory. By far the most intriguing is the legend surrounding the fabled Dagger of Zion and the awesome power it wields. Okay, and then straight into this room at the end. And you just spotted that green light there, that just went red. We are locked in here. So this is the library, so a couple more books. Of course, the books are optional, you do not have to read any of the books. It was here in the 6th century BC, between the Aventine and the Palatine Hills, that the Circus Maximus was born. With the Silk Road bringing thousands of travellers into the region annually, Delhi was soon overrun by merchants selling goods of every possible description. Okay, and another optional item, we can see this book sticking out of the wall here, so we can push this in as a button. Opening up the secret panel. You found the maze map. No wonder father never got lost. So not needed, but if you are playing for the first time and trying to find all the artifacts, this is potentially kind of helpful. Because uh, the maze is actually kind of big. <laughs> kind of tricky to navigate. And we do have a prompt here, let's... I've read all of these. Yeah, well Lara's just showing up there. <laughs> So you see this cute little elephant figure. This is an artifact. So all we have to do is shoot the glass and we can get that, but we do not have our pistols. So remember that is there. Bunch more books. Anyone with even a cursory knowledge of mineralogy would arrive at the same conclusion. Wherever this Isis stone was formed, it wasn't on Earth. As he struggled mightily to calm himself, Gilead removed the poison arrow from its quiver. The Trials of Gilead, Volume 2. The ruins of Atlantis were lost beneath the sea when the glaciers melted some 10,000 years ago. When the Spaniards had all but wiped out the Incan Empire, the remaining survivors fled to the mountains and disappeared. Legends say they retreated to the hidden city of Vilcabamba. Okay, and next. So we can see two more books here, so just go and push these book buttons in. 
don't know what to call them. Book buttons. There we go, and we have our trusty pistols. Nice. And we already know of one thing we now can all shoot. I need is something to shoot. Exactly. <laughs> so there we go. First artifact in the bag. Okay, next thing we're gonna do, not too obvious, but this painting kind of stands out. So what we can do is just grab the painting and we can see a target. So hop back. And it is kind of timed. So just whoop, shoot that quick. You can see the painting starts rising up again. So that's opened up this secret passage. So let's head on through. And there's all these boxes in the way. Now I'm a thug. I am a complete thug. So I am going to just shoot the boxes to get rid of them. Cool, all gone. And that actually lets us notice that there is this empty bucket here. So just go ahead and grab that, pop it in your backpack. This could come in handy. And let's move on. Okay, at the end, there's this button to let us out. And this is the gallery. So this has all the relics you pick up as you go along through the game. You can even interact with them. So this shows us the information that we had when we collect them the first time round. A stunning addition to my collection. Very nice. Okay, so from here, we're just gonna head upstairs. Plenty more books. And while any number of things can go wrong underground, the most dangerous aspect of spelunking is exposure to methane gases, which are difficult to detect without specific equipment. The roots of the banyan tree grow relentlessly and in every direction. <coughs> Many of the ancient temples of Angkor have been brought down as those roots exploit the small spaces between their massive stones. The concept of the sundial has existed for thousands of years and is one of the earliest devices for time measurement. There's some numbers written on the inside cover. 11, 2, 7. I wonder what they refer to. 11, 2, 7. These are actually kind of important numbers, but it's not so important that you need to write them down. We'll manage to figure it out as we go along. So one important item that we need in this room, you can kind of see it glowing just there. So just go ahead, shoot this, and then we can pick this up. You found the Sundial Gnomon. This belongs down in the garden. What's it doing in here? Okay, so now we're all done in the gallery. We can leave. So the note said the door was locked from the inside, so that's okay. All we have to do is push this button. That's better. Cool, cool. The native population of Costa Rica was ravaged by diseases brought by its conquerors and barely managed to survive to see the establishment of a capital city. By far the most important survival item one can possibly have is the will to survive. Okie dokie, so now we're actually going to head out into the garden. So, the garden is this way. So one of the longest treks through a corridor, the most annoying, but there is something we can show off on the way there. So, if you're not used to the Nintendo Wii version, if you haven't seen it, what is this doorway? This doorway is only on Nintendo Wii. What could possibly be down here? Okay, what is this? This is where our rubbing rewards go. 
So that's so cool. So as you find them, they collect here. There's trophies on the wall as well. Lara has weapons, which is a bit strange, but oh well. So I've got a panther head. There's the, um, the torso boss's finger, which is a bit kind of gross. Uh, there's the T-Rex head, of course. There's all of this here. So Lara's even kept the, the mine fuses to remind her of Larson. How sweet. There's a... Uh, a centaur torso, yep. <laughs> Velociraptor head, there's a centaur shield. There's some knives on the wall, I don't really understand the connection of these knives. I don't know where these were from. Uh, maybe someone else can enlighten me. And then there's a wolf. So how cool is this? This is a really awesome detail that they've added into Nintendo Wii. Okay, and continue out. So, as I've already said, this is a very long trek to and from the garden. <laughs> okay, here we are. And I'm just going to point out, right at the very far end, that's how we turn the water on and off, but we don't have the means to do that just yet. So just so you know, that's where that is. Okay, and a lot of places where we can use an item, you'll see this circle on the ground with a little image inside it. So this is where we're using the Sundial Gnomon. You see we have the, the prompt to use the item. Okay, and remember the numbers I told you to take note of? 11, 2, 7. This is what it's for, so we do have to do them in order, so all the way around to 11. And if you're using a controller, you might start to feel it vibrating as you get close to the correct number, so that's another way that, you know, if you're, of course, only using a controller, you'll not know otherwise, but that's another way to figure out the correct number. This just proves time never stands still. Awesome stuff. Another little hint is over here. Garden hours 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. 11 to 7. Very sneaky. Okay, and there's the grapple. We're going to be needing the grapple. So we have to figure out how to get to the center of the maze to begin with. So it's not too tricky along the way. I will just collect three artifacts that are in the maze. So firstly, just taking a left. Around to here. And there we go. So now just head back the way you came, back to the starting point. Okay, so from here anyway, I believe the quickest way to the middle is to turn right. So facing the gates here, take a right, even if you don't want the artifacts. So I confess I am looking at a map for these. These two over here confuse me a bit. So for an artifact to come all the way around. So a left or right doesn't really matter because they both lead into this little section. Just at that spot where I was when I said a left or a right. Okay, and then back. This is the way we entered. We're going back. So we kind of just passed this statue. I came from the this way did I let's not confuse things let's just carry on going 
So heading up this way. <laughs> Okay, straight across the middle here and from here it's pretty simple to figure out so right here is the the final artifact within the maze and then we, we are right at the middle here we go so not too tricky really but yeah you can get lost <laughs> okay so we have the grapple now this should help getting into those hard to reach places. Okay, so one thing we can do is use the sculptor gear now that we have the grapple, but I'm going to choose not to. I'll just use everything once I have it. So shortcut out as well. Use the grapple just to this should make for a shorter return trip. There we go, to make a shortcut. And now we can head back to the house. Okay, so now that we have the grapple, I'm gonna just make a quick detour for a secret, or an artifact I should say, which is in the library. Okay, so all you gotta do, grapple the, the lighting. Pull it down. And a secret panel has opened up. Nice. So that's pretty much the only one you need to take a detour for. So coming back to the library, which isn't much of a detour but all the others are along the way. Okay, so now we can head into the gym, now that we have the, uh, the grapple as well, so that's just through this way. And there's two artifacts in the gym. So a slight change on Nintendo Wii, for some reason we just have these two poles here, these vertical poles. So I believe on other versions you have uh, poles, horizontal poles that you can grab and they spin around. So I'm not too sure of the change here, it doesn't seem like it's too tricky to use on Nintendo Wii. Um, but anyway, it does look a little bit different. So starting at mat number one, just there. I'm gonna go ahead and press a button because we need to start spinning some stuff around to be able to get to an important item that's in here. So making them simple jumps across. Hop to here and then just over to these, I don't know what to call these, these bobbly bits <laughs> to make a ladder. Okay, so jumping back without pressing anything else, that's just a, an easy jump. Grab the med pack and we can push this button. Okay. Next, just for an artifact, I'm going to go to mat number two. So 
so I guess map number one is only for an artifact as well now that I think about it. So then over to here. I'm not really explaining what I'm doing, but you can see what I'm doing. Autopilot. It's what happens when you play something too many times. <laughs> okay, there we go. So yeah, these first uh, moves are really only for artifacts. So now to match number three again. We're getting another artifact. <laughs> okay, from here, so this is one thing we'll need the grapple for. So swing straight across and over to here. So we're heading to a button, so that's just inside this little gap. There we go, so that swung that round so that we can then reach the artifact. So same again, mat 3, we're going to head to the grapple point again. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. And this level can easily be done without taking any damage whatsoever by the way. <laughs> That's probably one of the first times I've taken damage. Okay, so for this jump. You actually want to be just above these scuff marks on the wall. And we're going to do a, um, a 90 degree jump away from the wall. There we go, to here. You see, everything's going wrong. If I don't have to talk, everything's perfect. <laughs> I can't really concentrate on talking and tomb raiding. There we go. So this pole that just swung round, this is the one I moved using the button. So just turn around and we can easily swing into this gap and collect the artifact. That's a big old close up on Laura's face. Cool. Right, now moving on with the main order of business. Again, match number three. This time, I'm going to come around to the right. So this is the main thing you want to do to get the item that we need. Okay, so from here, if I just lean back, you can see a pole, but I'm going to need to jump from the pole to another pole, which we need to put into place. So just drop down. Okay, another grapple point, so just hop back, swing on over. And you specifically have to be right here for Lara to have her feet up like that, and then you can lean back and jump to this. There we go, so now that is in place, we can go back and now jump to that. Okay, so for a safe way down, just grab this ladder section here. So same again, mat number three, come around to the right. Okay, so from here we can now lean back and swing and grab this. So jump to here and then you might want to turn your camera, it's up to you. I'm sure she'll fairly easily make the jump if you don't. I always just like to turn the camera, it just makes it easier on Nintendo Wii. And here we go. You found the wrench. Nice. I thought I'd lost this. 
silly place to lose it, really. Because kind of technically you did lose it. Lara! Look at all these shenanigans because I'm recording. Crikey, so you can safely get down without dying if you just jump to the uh, the ladder there, okay? <laughs> so once you've safely made your way down, we can head on out. That's all we need to do, so we've picked up the wrench and I'm now going to turn on the water. So Stella's site mentions that there is a bug and you might not want to turn the water on just yet, but I am going to be brazen and I'm going to turn on the water. So I'll explain the bug later once we get to it. But yeah, it's up to you. You might want to not do that. So we're heading to the garden. So as I've mentioned, it's at the furthest end where we can turn on the water. Okay, so just come through the gate. And over here, wait for your action prompt. There it is. Choose your wrench. And again, press action to grab hold of the wrench and then pull it around. Finally, I'll be able to take that hot shower. Awesome stuff. Okay. So now I've turned on the water, we have the opportunity to fill the bucket. Lovely. Okay, so we can fill the bucket at any water point, so the fountain there, plus these little fountains over here. There's also one in front of the gym, in that little courtyard section. So now the water is on, so again, optional to do that at this point. I'm going to head back inside. Okay, so now I have the bucket of water, there's something else we can do. Sometimes Lara comments how hot this is, I don't know why sometimes she does, sometimes she doesn't. But here we can actually use the bucket of water. I do hope Winston will be able to start another fire tonight. So in doing that it's kind of drawn attention to this plaque at the back of the fire. So you may have also spotted this strange tile on the floor. Magic. Oh, there's Winston. He kind of disappears. He comes and goes. He's a bit creepy. <laughs> okay, so if I just turn around so you can see this. So behind the fireplace, if I step off the tile, that instantly covers itself back up. So we could try asking Winston if he could stand on this but he, he sometimes just is completely fed up with Lara's shenanigans. So just come on over <laughs> to this box. So you probably already thought perhaps there is a box we can put on the tile. And indeed there is. Oh, 
Ah, yes. We didn't get shown what this is, but this is a decorative arrow. Okay, and this way heads straight to the pool room. Okay, so we picked up a decorative arrow. We now need a decorative bow. Can you spot it? Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do in here, just grapple this, pull it down. Okay, let it go, okay. <laughs> and then that's gonna help us to get up to the balcony. So our starting point for trying to climb up to that is these boxes. Okay, so grabbing this, not too obvious that we can grab this, but just shimmy it all the way around. Lean back to here. So again, we can lean back and grab this that we have just moved. And swing on over. Now, very optional. There is an optional shortcut we can make from the pool room to the gym. So I'll show you how to do that. What we need to do, if you take notice of these arrows on the ground, we actually need to spin this around. And it kind of seems like we need something else here. There isn't another statue. It's kind of, it's broken. It's right over here. So what are we going to do? Well, actually this will suffice. So just bring it over to this rounded thing on the floor here. Spin it around and just make sure you see the pole sticking out. There we go, you just want that in the correct position as well. So now we can shoot this. Okay, so as I say, this is optional. So there's something else to do if we want to complete the shortcut. What we do want to do, just hop, hop over those boxes. There is a med pack here and we can see there is a target point just here. I wish I hadn't had to do that. I mean, technically you didn't, Lara. You're just being a vandal. Okay, so that was one rope of three holding up the statue. We're gonna break the statue. So there's two more ropes to break. So next I do need to just pull this over so you can't move this too far out of the way. So just pull it to a roundabout here. And then again we're going to start climbing up at the boxes. Okay, so from here, this time we're going to lean back and jump to here. And the reason I moved this is to be able to hop onto it and over to here. Now just be careful, we're going to need to grapple. Ooh, I nearly didn't make it. And something very important, just push this box off the edge. So this is a nice shortcut in case you fall down. Okay, to complete the shortcut, just grapple this atlas statue and the globe will eventually fall down. Eventually, Lara, what's going on with you? There we go. Awesome stuff. So, once you've done that, if you want to do that, that is. So there is another med pack just here and then we can shoot that second rope. Okay, one more to go. So if you didn't move the box off the top of that, you might not want to fall down just there. So I'm just gonna pop it just in here, pop it 
Lara, you are full of shenanigans today. Then again, what's new? Right, that'll do. And you may have also noticed there is another uh, target just here. So go ahead and shoot that. Okay, there we go. <laughs> So that's released this wooden plank is kind of a seesaw. So we're going to have to try and get on the seesaw. And when it's higher up at the further end, we can jump to the, the planks across the way. Oh, there we go. You actually did that for me today. Usually she plays me up. <laughs> There's many falling downs usually. So from here, just hop back, and when you are level with this little opening, just jump on in. And here is the last rope. I suppose I'll have to order another statue. That's your own fault, Lara. Okay, so this is where I'm going to talk about the bug. So the statue has fallen into the water and broken, and we can grab the bow that we can clearly see. So the bug on Stella's site mentions that once you hop into the water and grab the bow, it'll show you, you found the bow. And then uh, you'll actually just instantly drown for some reason and you'll load back into the game and you will not have the bow in your inventory, nor will it be here, forcing you to start Croft Manor again because there is nothing you can do without the bow. So optional, up to you if you want to fill up the water. I have not had this bug on Nintendo Wii. Uh, but just so you know about the bug, I don't believe I've had it on PlayStation 2 either, but that was a long time ago when I played, so I can't confirm that. But hop in and grab the bow. You found the decorative bow. Splendid, splendid indeed. So this will lead to the swimming pool. Uh, to the um, the gym, I mean, so of course optional as I've already said. There is our final artifact on the way, and we will just need to pull this lever. So the little doors that it kept showing me was actually... <coughs> that was close. <laughs> that was actually um, just near the decorative bow where we picked that up. Okay, so we have everything we need now. We have a bow, an arrow, and a sculptor gear. If you did not yet turn on the water, now is the chance to do that. So you can see there is a fountain here if you didn't fill up the bucket either. It's also optional to leave through the gym. Up to you. Okay, so now I have everything I need, I'm going to head to the garden. Okay, so into the maze, and we can use these items in the middle of this maze section. Okay, so firstly, as I said, you could have used the, um, the sculpture gear while we were here the first time round. I'm going to do that now, so just grapple this to pull that away. And the gear can be used here. Okay, now placing the bow and arrow. So climb onto the sculpture, and we can use the arrow just here. And the bow is to be used just here. And once everything is in place, you can pull the lever. So the lever won't do anything unless the bow and arrow are there. Oh, 
What a delightfully gruesome display. Delightfully gruesome. Also, if you've been reading the books, you might realise this is our friend Gilead that we've been reading about. So anyway, this statue here has dropped this. The music box cylinder. Now I'm getting somewhere. Indeed we are. This is the final item we need. We can now open the music room. Let me just double check my artifacts. Eight. Cool, cool. If I forget one, it's always the one in the library. <laughs> As I've said, that's the only one you need to backtrack to. Okay, so now we can head up to the music room. So I did already mention it's up along this way. And a couple more books on the way as well. The legend tells us that the kings of Tibet were descendants from heaven with ropes attaching them to heaven itself. When they died, a heavenly creature would pull the ropes up, bringing their bodies up with them. As Charles Kane notes in his superb history of the Iron Curtain, there were numerous historical precedents against the practicality or feasibility of the fortress system of foreign policy. Something's missing. Okay, so all we gotta do here is use the music box cylinder. What a lovely tune. Nice. And there we go. Craft Manor complete. Alrighty, so there's not much to do in this room. There's two more books. When Lord Byron gave the Bridge of Sighs its name in the 19th century, he imagined what it must have been like for a prisoner to take one final look at the beauty of Venice before being led to their fate in the prison below. In the summer, the risk of flooding should not be discounted, as a single rainfall can easily last for days, overflowing the Paria River and threatening Santa Cruz de la Sierra and the Bolivian lowlands to the south. Okay, so all there really is, we can play with the harp. We can play with the piano. And there is this stereo system over here. We can use this to listen to the soundtrack. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so anyway, not much to do but at least it was fun getting in here. So then, this brings Tomb Raider Anniversary to an end and concludes my walkthrough. So I hope you've enjoyed watching on Nintendo Wii version, and I hope to see you next time. Take it easy.